I just tell the truth and telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. If you mix brilliance with bravery, that we can ignite something, even this conversation alone can ignite the people. The time is now to express and for people to believe in themselves. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you. Hey guys, what's up with your girl Kelly? We are back with another video. If y'all are new to the channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys. Join me if you want to do uh, true crime stories, news, and politics. I guarantee you, you would enjoy the content. And if you are a returning listener or subscriber, thank you as always for being a friend, guys. Please interact with the video. Let me know what you think of the topic in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe. And I thank everyone in advance for watching this video. So guys... I'm going to jump on here and just talk about the um, Meet the Press interview that Trump did last week. So I just wanted to kind of talk about it, talk about some of the points that he made, what I think about them, and why I may or may not agree or disagree with him. So let's get into it, guys. Without further ado. I'm here to answer for that, but he's not. And I want to look in that camera right now and tell you, Donald, I know you're watching. You can't help yourself. I know you're watching, okay? And you're not here tonight. Not because of polls and not because of your indictments. You're not here tonight because you're afraid of being on the stage and defending your record. You're ducking these things. And let me tell you what's going to happen. You keep doing that, no one up here is going to call you Donald Trump anymore. We're going to call you Donald Duck. Oh, All right. Whoa. Okay. answer for So did you guys catch that last GOP primary debate? I mean, was that thing not painful or what? I mean, my God. I did a live. Rumble, first of all, was messing up. Totally useless platform. Whenever they have any sort of big event, it's just infuriating. But the little bit that I did get to watch made me want to pull, like, you know, all my fingernails out one by one. But uh, this was this was this was a great moment, you know. Donald Duck, like, let's never forget. Let's always remember this attempt by Chris Christie that really just yielded a, you know, a beautiful meme and a perfect, uh, you know, uh, chef's kiss little moment from the most boring debate I've ever seen in recent memory. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Anyways, we're here to talk about the Meet the Press interview that he did. So let's get into it, y'all. President Trump, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thank you. I want to dive right into this. A lot to get to. Good. There are a number of things that make your campaign unprecedented. You are the first former president to run for re-election in more than 100 years. You are facing four indictments. You have an incredibly significant lead in the GOP primary polls. But I want to ask you this, Mr. President, why do you want to be president again? Well, it's a very simple answer, and I can give it uh, very easily. It's called Make America Great Again. Feelings. Let me ask you, though, well, I don't, about a I don't second. necessarily. Well, no he, he called in. You mean he called in all these meetings? He was calling in on the meetings. He was put on speakerphone and gave me every single day and the witness literally testified. many, many calls. And, uh, and what about the fact that he got rid of the prosecutor for a billion dollars. Well, the said, witness you don't, you don't get rid of this prosecutor. We're not giving you a billion dollars to Ukraine. He said that. I mean, there are a lot of things here. Mr. Mr. President, the witness who testified, though, said that he never heard any discussion of business when President Biden was put on the well, phone. Wait, wait. You saw the prosecutor thing on about... television, because I saw it on your network. He said, you don't get rid of this prosecutor. I'm not giving one billion dollars. That was looked into as well. And as you know, there was oh, never any wrongdoing. If, if I ever said that, on. quid pro let's, quo. Let's... And that's exactly what they tried to do, you know, with the quote unquote perfect phone call, as he would uh, put it, only as he can do, and what Joe Biden actually did. And if you guys don't know. And I was going, supposed to announce that there is another billion dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had they were walking out to the press conference. Said, "No, nah, I said I'm not going to. We're not going to give you the billion dollars." They said, "You have no authority. You're not the president." The president said, "I said call him." <laughs> I said, "I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars." I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Well, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. Um, yeah, it's pretty outrageous to think 
and people just glaze over this people just really don't have a full-on grasp somebody was comparing like what happened with nixon and watergate back in the day as you know it was like regarded as this huge scandal and nixon in reality wasn't even really the main like person who ordered this spy campaign on the dnc like he participated in the cover-up after the fact because a lot of his staffers did uh were, were kind of involved in this but he didn't even really know about it and pe this is normally the case people at the very very top it, you're going to be hard pressed to be able to link anything bad that was happening underneath them directly to them but with joe biden he said it right out of his dirty little hooker's mouth so it's kind of hard to refute but i want to stay on this idea of what you mean by retribution are you looking to appoint an attorney general who will prosecute the people you tell them to prosecute? I'm looking to appoint an attorney general who's going to be tough on crime and fair. Very simple. And go after your political enemies? No, no, I would never do that. But Biden has done that. Look, Biden, these aren't indictments against me. These are Biden indictments. This isn't God coming down and very fairly <laughs> said, oh, you spoke badly about an election. The election was rigged. There's no mm. question about that. Facts. There's so much proof on it. Even if you go to the more modern day proof with the, uh, they call it Twitter files, FBI and mm. Twitter. Or you take a look at the Amazon stuff or the Google stuff, or you take a look at 2,000 mules, you take a look at all of the ballot stuffing that's on tape, you take a look at the fact that the legislatures didn't approve a lot of the things that were done in the elections and they had to approve. And we could go on forever. We could go on forever. But, but no, I want somebody that's going to be strong, respected, tough, and fair. Just to go back to a couple of the points you said, the ballot stuffing, that's something that's been debunked. It hasn't As been you know, sorry, it's on camera. But, but let's, I oh, do I? want to keep moving forward. Yeah, but and of course, it's on camera. Hundreds. I just don't understand how these people can just say these fucking lies. It's, it's, it's wild to me. You are not allowed to have armfuls of ballots and just like, del you know, deliver these to these polling places. It is bad. It's, it's ballot stuffing. It's exactly what it sounds like. I mean, it's like, you know, there's a few exceptions where you can deliver like immediate families ballots, but like people were showing up with like hundreds of ballots, tens of ballots, dozens of ballots, whatever you want to say. Boxes full of ballots were showing up. Even thousands and thousands of people. You take a look through the vote. Take a look. It's on camera. But Mr. President, they have you know thousands the of pictures. But I know, but Kristen, you can't say it. Have they have thousands of pictures of people. I know you have to say that for your network, but <laughs> you shouldn't say it. That, because she that's the problem. Mr. President, the news has the lost such a liar. Power. Let's stay on track, though, Mr. President. Let's I, but stay on no, track but you're saying it's just, it hasn't. We have thousands of essentially motion pictures of people stuffing the ballot boxes. <laughs> Mr. President, Tens of thousands. They're not stuffing the ballot boxes. Girl, been told yes, they are. Officials. But let's stay Shut on track. Because we have so much ground to cover. You have we people have that went and, and voted in one Mr. place, President. another place, another place, as many as I understand, 28 different places in one day with seven, eight, nine ballots a piece. They can't do any more because it would look too phony. Mm -hmm. These were professional people. They were stuffing the ballot boxes. It's it's there. I mean, it's there to you see. A lot of people don't like looking at it. 60 different cases all across the country. You lost that, but let's stay on track. We lost. The so judges many, didn't want to hear them. Mr. President, but if, so this, many if this were ever before a court, we would win so easy. There is so much evidence that the election was rigged. And you may not even put the section on your show, and you'll have to decide what you want to do. But people know it was rigged. Look, the media, President, when I first no got involved in politics, as you know, there's no Carol, evidence of that. Uh, so tremendous topics. evidence. I want to talk about what it is. Listen, let me ask you this. Mr. You President, agree there was tr Twitter files, right? Mr. President. You agree there were 51 intelligence agents that lied. You agree with I'm that? I'm not the one who's being interviewed. Let's well, no, stay on track no, because I want to talk about That's the rigging the election. When I was impeached for a perfect phone call, and now it turned <laughs> out to be perfect, I hope you will admit that at least. It's perfect. Because I was right, 100% right. But I was impeached for a perfect phone call. And how sad that is. And we had 196 to nothing vote, Republicans. Very unusual for the Republican Party. I was so proud of them. 196, the entire House, not one person dissented. And then other than Romney, who sort of get, gave me half a vote, but we had 100% in the Senate. People think I was treated very unfairly. Well, the people who voted, I know, I know I was treated the people who voted for mm -hmm. that impeachment say that the phone call that you referenced was about a quid pro quo. It was perfect. But it, Girl. My phone call was perfect. My phone call was saying, please investigate any crimes that you see. And by the way, I'm mandated to do that as the president of the United States. And it was really, really a call to congratulate so, him on winning the election. She'll call that a quid pro quo, but she won't acknowledge what Joe Biden did as being a, a quid pro quo. No, no, no. There's no evidence of that. There's no evidence. Even though he's on camera saying it. And, uh, like, she just, it's just, it's so infuriating. Like, what is this bullshit 
These people just feed us, shovel it into our mouths. Give us some shit, manja. We are the people. Give us the shit, manja, manja. manja. Ridiculous. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Why so much hypocrisy when it comes to Donald Trump? I just will never understand the way that they have treated this man. I mean, I, I do understand it because obviously it's because, you know, he's not looking out for them. He's looking out for the populace. But I still just, it never ceases to amaze me how much they just blatantly go after this man with no shame whatsoever. But, Mr. Um, President, let's... No, what, what, when you talk about quid pro quo, please don't talk about quid pro quo because there was none in the call at all. Where there's that a quid, the pro, where there is a was quid pro quo was when Biden said very strongly, mm -hmm. we're not going to give them the billion dollars unless they get rid of the prosecutor. That's a quid pro quo. But before we move on from Capitol Hill, do you think Republican hardliners should abandon their threat to shut down the government over their no, spending priorities now shouldn't. that there is this impeachment? No, I think if they don't get a fair deal, we have to save our country. We have $35 yeah. trillion dollars in debt. Shut it down. You, you would know, shut down the government? You'd support that? Yeah. I'd shut, shut down, down the government if they can't make an appropriate deal. Absolutely. Okay. Let's talk about the economy. And I want to start by talking about this big standoff between the auto workers and the big three auto manufacturers. Yeah. My question for you, Mr. President, whose side are you on in this? Uh, I'm on the side of uh, making our country great. Uh, mm -hmm. The auto workers uh, are not going to have any jobs when you come right down to it, because if you take a look at what they're doing. First of all, I just want to say that that question was stupid as fuck. Whose side are you on? Who said, are you inside the auto workers? Are you inside of the big auto industry and, uh, you know, all of the companies that are just, uh, you know, uh, being so mean to all these poor auto workers and like, okay, uh, stupid question, dumb, fucking stupid. If he's president, he's got to find a solution for everybody. But I would, I would lean more towards wanting him to say he's on the side of the auto workers, obviously, but at the same time, unions... I don't really like, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about, about unions as a whole. Holding people hostage for making demands, it, to me, is kind of ridiculous. I don't even think we should have a standard minimum wage. I think that people should be able to set their wages however they want, make agreements with their employees. I don't even think we should have income tax. So if we're being really honest, I'll just take it all the way there. But I'm just saying that's a very dumb question. But I do like the way that he answered it. With electric cars. Electric cars are going to be made in China. The auto workers are not going to have any, I'll tell you what, the auto workers are being sold down the river by their leadership, and their leadership should endorse Trump. The reason is, you're going to have choice. Like in school, I want school choice. I also want choice for cars. If somebody wants gasoline, if somebody wants all electric, they can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. But they're destroying the consumer, and they're destroying the auto workers. The auto workers will not have any jobs, Kristen, because the, mm -hmm. all of these cars are going to be made in China. The electric cars automatically are going to be made in China. You also added $8 trillion to the national debt. Your GOP challenger, Nikki Haley, made that point, saying, quote, the truth is that Biden didn't do this to us. Republicans did this to us. Did so she have a point? We had a thing happen to us. We had the greatest economy in history, and then we got hit with COVID. And we had to keep this, this beautiful thing going. And if I didn't do that, if we didn't put some money in, nobody knew what COVID was. Remember, this was a new thing that came in. Somebody said it's dust coming in from China. It <laughs> came from China. They tried and denied it, or they tried for a little while, and we didn't let it. It came from Wuhan, actually, which now they agree. Everybody's now agreeing that it came from Wuhan. I said that years ago. Because it comes from it's China. Racist. It's not racist at all. No, not at all. It comes from China. That's why. It comes from China. But uh, we had that. to do things that were very severe. We had to let... Some money come out. We were going to, we were on the verge of doing something that was amazing. We were going to have energy at a level bigger than Russia and Saudi Arabia combined. Facts. That energy was going to be sold to Europe and all other places. The Facts. prices would have come down. We were going to make a fortune and we were going to start paying off debt. Instead, we got hit with COVID. People didn't need oil mm -hmm. because nobody was driving all over the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, frankly, uh, it was a disaster. What China did to the world with COVID is something that we're going to get to the bottom of and they have to pay something back you know nobody can pay back the cost of all those lives and all the money that was lost but nobody can pay back the lives and all of the damage that was caused but, to Nikki China. but you know what the they have to they have to pay something back. <laughs> they Haley's have to do the something argument, though. what do you say to her what does nikki haley know i mean i know nikki <laughs> haley very well she <laughs> said i'm the greatest president she, she left she said i'm the greatest <laughs> president. now she's running for office and she says something look <laughs> nikki haley doesn't know anything about it she's a politician she knows nothing about it very nice woman <laughs> some people like that I, I would say but she left office she said very strongly i will never run he was a great president, and then in some cases said the greatest president in my lifetime. In one case, said the pres greatest president ever. Now she's running. <laughs> uh, Nikki Haley has nothing to do with this. We nothing. Will, Not we even were one going thing. to make a fortune off our energy. We were going to send the energy to Europe. 
Europe was going to pay us tremendous amounts of money. And I'll tell you, you would have never had the Ukraine monster at all. It would have never happened. Mm -hmm. Russia would have never got just by sheer force of personality. But beyond personality, mm -hmm. what happened is when oil hit $100 a barrel, and, or, and by the way, it's right there right now again, Putin makes a fortune on this war. You know, everybody said, oh, he can't afford it. If Biden allowed my policies to stay in place, oil would right now be at $40 a barrel and Putin wouldn't be able to afford them. We war. are going to get to the war in Ukraine. But first, I do want to talk about the issue Girl, of up. abortion, which is okay. important to a lot of voters all across the country. Just this week, women in Idaho and Tennessee, I don't know if you saw this, <laughs> filed suit against their state saying their lives were put at risk after they were denied abortion services because oh, really? the state's restrictive laws put in place after Roe was overturned. So How were their lives put at risk is what I, that I would just, I would love to know. How were their lives put at risk, ma'am? Do you have some context behind that? Uh, like, what, what is the basis of that? My question for you, Mr. President, is... How is it acceptable in America that women's lives are at risk? Doctors are being that's forced not, to turn away patients in need or that's risk breaking the law. Ready? A little Ready? bit of a long answer. I hope you have time. I hope you have time. I'm here for <laughs> you. You have Roe v. Wade. For 52 <laughs> years, people, including Democrats, don't wanted do to go back to states so that states could make the rank. Roe v. Wade, I, I did something that nobody thought was possible, <laughs> and Roe v. Wade was terminated and was put back to the states. Now, people, pro-lifers, have the right to negotiate for the first time. They had no rights at all. Because the radical people on this are really the people, the Democrats, that say after five months, six months, seven months, eight months, nine months, and even after birth, you're allowed to President, terminate the, the baby. Democrats aren't saying that. I just have to. Democrats are not saying that. They are. Not true. You Absolutely have a Virginia are. governor, previous governor, who said after the baby is born, you will make a determination, and if you want, you will kill that baby. But the Mr. baby President, is now born. Democrats writ large are not talking about any that. restrictions on abortion. I don't. I've always believed even in the third trimester. I, 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 do you think there should be any limitation on abortions? Uh, no, I do not. Up till now, my understanding is there wasn't a limit on when in a pregnancy a woman could receive an abortion. Have you set the, any limit? There on are it? no limits. Is there a cutoff for you before that point? No, to me, it's, it, it's a reproductive, it's a health care decision, it's up to women to make that decision. Where it's obvious that a woman is about to give birth, she has physical signs of, of, that she is about to give a birth. Would that still be a point at which she could request an abortion if she was so certified? My bill would allow that, yes. Virginia's governor says he has no regrets on his comments earlier this week defending abortion, even as a baby is being born. If a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen. Um, the infant would be delivered, uh, the infant would be kept comfortable, uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired, and then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mothers. Are you for the, what he said, or late-term abortion, or the moments that he was talking about where you would keep a woman comfortable after she was giving birth in case she wanted to abort her third-term child? I don't know all his comments, but what I do know that is that I am for uh, women having the right to make a choice about her own body. For that but you have allowed. legislation. But let me just ask Kristen, you. You have legislation in certain states where it's allowed. Mr. President. The governor of Virginia, previous governor, who was previous a whack governor. job, I call him the Michael Jackson governor. No one's talking that about governor, <laughs> Why? Know me, that governor said you can kill the baby after birth. <laughs> Mr. President, this is about what you would do if you were reelected. As you know, you're the you Michael have Jackson to governor. Weeks, which will be, oh, it's because he did blackface. Both sides will be happy. We have to bring the country together on this issue. Mr. President, with that only 1% of late-term abortions happen in always in the state they of are the radical people it's not like they're coming right out and saying we support late-term abortions we support abortions all the way up until the ninth month and even uh minutes after birth you know not many people are going to be willing to go out and say that just just as bluntly as as i just said it except for maybe ralph ralph northam ready i was able ready? to do something which gave at least pro-life people a voice now it's going to work out. Now the number of months will be determined. You and you're going to have something question? where everybody comes together. He's talking. Are you, though, that women say their lives are being put at risk? Do you feel you bear any They're responsibility? Liars. Because as you say, you are responsible. What's going to happen? Them. This is an issue They're that's been liars. going for a long time, and it's a very polarizing issue. Because of what's been done, and because of the fact we brought it back to the states, we're going to have people come together on this issue. They're going to determine the time, because nobody wants to see five, six, seven, eight, nine months. Nobody wants to see abortions when you have a baby in the womb, I said with Hillary Clinton when we had the debate, I made a statement, rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month. You're allowed to do that, and you shouldn't be allowed to do that. Again, no one and, and is again, arguing listen, for that. That's look, not a part of any Girl. The Democrats are able to kill what? the baby I after birth. Nobody about. wants that. that. Democrats don't want that. So either. we're going to come I together. Wanna, I want to know what you want. I want to know what you're going to do if you're We are going to come together. Would you sign federal legislation there. that would ban abortion at 15 weeks? No, no. Let me just tell you what I do. I'm going to come together with all groups and we're going to have something that's acceptable. Right now, to my way of thinking, the Democrats are the radicals because after four and five and six months. But but you have to say this 
after birth. You have New York State and other places that pass legislation where you're allowed to kill the baby after birth. Mr. President, I want to give voters who are going to be weighing in on this election yeah. a very clear sense of where I think you stand I on think this. they're all going to like me. I think both sides are going to like me. Let, let me what, but what's let going Mr. to have to happen is you're going to have to... Question, listen, please. you're asking me a question. <laughs> what's going to happen is you're going to come up with a number of weeks or months. You're going to come up with a number that's going to make people happy. I would sit down with both sides and I'd <laughs> negotiate something and we'll end up with peace on that issue for the first time in 52 years. Uh, I'm not going to say I would or I wouldn't. I mean, DeSantis is, w- is willing to sign a five-week and six-week ban. Would you support that? You think I, that I think what he far? did is a terrible thing and a terrible mistake. She did do a good job overall, I found, during this interview. But one thing that annoyed me was that, like, her questions, she was so, like, attached. She was so tethered to her questions that, like, I don't feel like she was listening to his answers whatsoever. I mean, there's just factors that are involved that make it impossible to dictate a policy that it may or may not be implemented in the future uh, one or two years down the road as he's running for president of the country it's just it's it's ridiculous for her to try to like get a set policy answer on each one of these topics that she's trying to bring it's like just let him fucking talk about his opinions and i don't really have a problem with what he said there i do personally believe that um it should be a state's right issue now would I support some sort of federal ban after like 15 weeks? Absolutely, because it is ridiculous. It's outrageous. It's completely demonic and satanic that we are allowing in some states, uh, you know, third term abortions. I mean, that should not be allowed. I don't care. Uh, there's a lot that I think can be done with this topic, with this issue. And this is one of the major things that people attacked Trump. Uh, over on the right saying that he's not conservative enough on this issue he is not you know going far enough as he needs to go on this issue and you know i don't really think in my heart of hearts that trump is completely pro-life when it comes to abortion i think he's more of like a libertarian minded person in that regard i am pro-life a hundred percent i think that abortion it's so hard to say but i i don't agree with it okay let's put it that way i do not agree with it but i think that if women want to do that there should have to be certain measures in place it should never be government funded if it has to do with uh, a, a crime then there should be a police report that is made and reported to the police what has happened in order for you to be able to then terminate the life of your baby even that i feel like there should be very very strict guardrails on that i don't even really agree with that at all but i i just think that in this country we live in, in a society with people that have so many different views and they might be completely different than your own so it's it's really hard to say that like your specific will my will your will whatever your thoughts are on the issue needs to be implemented across the board we just can't we can't do that we live in a too diverse of a society so i think that what he's saying here is actually a good stance to take when it comes to getting prepared and getting ready to take on the general election which is i think what trump is focusing on now because the gop primary is such a complete and utter shit show and a joke that it's like there's really no competition i mean he's so far ahead And I think that he's being diplomatic in his responses. Now, I do hope that he is putting on some sort of a front in a way. You know, like, I I really hope that, like, this is just somewhat of a facade because when he gets in that Oval Office, when he gets back in that White House, if he doesn't turn into dark MAGA and, like, go full on, like, angry Trump, you know, like, just vengeful Donald, you know, Donald Duck, if you will. I don't even know what. I don't even know what. But I'm pretty sure that he's going to learn from his first term. He didn't go after Hillary Clinton. You know, I really hope he's learned from that. And I think that he has. But I think at the same time, he does have an election win and he's trying to win it. So I think people just need to calm their tits down and just understand that, like, in order to get him in there, he has to pull himself back a little bit, be a little bit more moderate during the election phase. And then whenever... He does win, God willing. We just have to, we're just going to have to push. We're just going to literally have to push. And with a little faith, I think, and a little trust in him, I think that he will do what needs to be done. And both sides are going to come together. And both sides, both sides, and this is a big statement, 
Both sides will come together, and for the first time in 52 years, you'll have an issue that we can put behind us. At the federal level? Uh, it could be state or it could be federal. I don't frankly care. <laughs> what he's trying to say, ma'am, I think if you would just, you know, take a breath and relax, is that, you know, I think he would support a federal ban after a certain point, so like a 15-week federal ban, and then anything before that is left up to the states. That's what I'm interpreting it as. And that's a position that I feel like, you know, I, I'm comfortable with, and I think that, like, overall is a win for pro-lifers because before – there was this like inherent right for women to just be able to kill their babies. I mean, we have to take the the wins as they come, guys. Like, let's just everybody just hold on a second. It's like people get rabbit over this argument, and I I get it. We're talking about the lives of babies. It's a very important issue, one of the most important. But at the same time, we are going to have to change hearts and minds on this issue. So you know, take the wins as we get them. And then push harder in communities, push harder in uh, churches, within your families, within your surrounding, you know, the people who surround you in everyday life to be an advocate for pro-life, be an advocate for babies, be an advocate for mothers who have a difficult situation. And then we can hopefully turn those people around to our position so that one day the majority of the country will think the way that, you know, pro-lifers think. And... Maybe we can eventually one day put an end to abortion, but we can't go from zero to a hundred real fucking quick and like Roe v. Wade gets overturned and then all of a sudden we're trying to do something just as uh, dramatic, but on the other side of the coin. It just doesn't work that way. I mean, it's just look at where we've gotten. Look at the time it's taken. You know, it's been a slow creep and then all of a sudden, boom, everything is being thrust upon us. We cannot just reverse course and just thrust everything back it's like on certain issues yes but on this issue i feel like this is going to have to be a slower going process you are facing four indictments 91 felony if charges. you would say it properly i'm facing four biden indictments <laughs> he told the justice department to indict him or merrick garland said let's indict him let me ask you this mr President. they indicted their political opponent i just want to hear from you on this i want to know what's in your head when you go to bed at night do you worry about going to jail no, I don't. Really. What a stupid question. I don't even think about it. I'm built a little differently, I guess, because I have had people <laughs> come up to me and say, how do you do it, sir? How do you do it? Uh, I don't even think about it. Uh, these are corrupt people that I'm dealing with. They're destroying our country. I don't even think about it. All I think about is making the country great, making America great. Look, these are political, these are banana republic indictments. These are third world indictments. The president of the United States sees how we're doing. We have a movement, the likes of which has never happened in this country before. And you see it with the polls. I mean, I'm up on these people by 60 points and 59 points. And I don't mean I'm at 59. I'm leading them by 59. You almost say, like, why are they campaigning? Asa Hutchinson is at zero. <laughs> Christie's at two. Other ones are at one. Uh, DeSanctimonious is at nine. I just see a poll come. I mean, I'm leading him by 60 points. Mr. President. And you say, why are they doing it? But here's what they did. They saw this happening. <laughs> and he went to the Attorney General of the United States, and he told him, indict Trump. There's just no evidence of that, oh, Mr. Why? President. Because, you know, <laughs> let's, let's stay look under at that. all the lies I want, he's Mr. told. Mr. President, I want to talk Mr. about Mr. wait a minute, wait, wait. Could I say one thing? Look at all the lies he's told <gasps> over the last couple of weeks. He said he was at the World Trade Center, and he wasn't. He said he flew airplanes, <laughs> right? He didn't. He said he drove trucks, and he didn't. Everything he says is like a lie. It's terrible. <laughs> Mr. President, Even his handicap in golf, he said he's a six. He's not a six. I want to stay focused <laughs> on you for the purposes of this interview, okay? Because it's important that we hear from you about all of this. Tell well, me I'd what, like you to, but you keep me, interrupting me. Tell me, Mr. President, tell me what you see when you look at your yeah, mouth. Shut your whore mouth, girl. I see somebody <laughs> that loves this country, in me, that loves this country. I see tremendous unfairness. I think very few people would have able, been able to handle <laughs> what I handled. When I was coming down the escalator with Melania, uh, I was already under investigation because they saw how well I was doing in the polls. And it just got worse and worse. And we caught them. We said they were spying on our campaign. It turned out to be true. They had the fake dossier. That turned out to be true. It was paid for by the Democrat Party. It was all fiction. All of these things happened. Impeachment hoax number one, impeachment hoax number two. I've been treated very badly. And I've won every single time. When you say, do I sleep? I sleep. I sleep. Because I truly feel that in the end, uh, we're going to win. I think we're going to win an election the likes of which nobody's ever seen before. I don't think anything's going to stop it. Nothing's going to stop it. Because people see what's happened to our country. We're not respected in the world. Look at other countries. Look at what's happened. Everybody's going to the side of China. Russia, 
uh, Saudi We're going to talk about that. No, no. Mr. President, China I want, I want to delve into the foreign world. policy, but let's get through this, and then I want to talk to you about no. all of those issues okay. you just talked about, Mr. President. By the way, do you what? think your former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, is still loyal to you? He just pleaded not guilty in the Well, I hope he's loyal to me. I mean, Do you worry about him flipping? Wrong. Do you worry I didn't about do anything wrong. Okay, let's talk about Georgia. I want to talk about that phone call that you made to Georgia's Secretary of State, sure. a Republican, the Brad Raffensperger. That was even more perfect than my call to let's talk about it. the President of Ukraine. Okay. It was a perfect call. It, just before you start, <laughs> many top legal scholars, almost everyone, but many top have analyzed that phone call. That was a phone call made in front perfect. of, I guess, seven or eight lawyers. Brad Raffensperger, the head, who, by the way, last week said, I didn't do anything wrong. He said that was a negotiation. Brad Raffensperger, who I was dealing with, I appreciate that he said that, but he said last week, I didn't do anything Let's talk wrong. about it so we can move on. No, no, you no, said no, in the let call. Let me just tell you one other Please thing. Please shut up. When I spoke, I knew I was probably being taped. I didn't ask, but I knew I was probably being taped. You know, they illegally taped me because they taped me in Florida. It's a two-party state. You know that, right? So they illegally taped the call. But forget about that for a second. Uh, I knew that there were many lawyers on the phone from the other side. From, there were many people. There were many people on the phone. When I told them, I said the election was rigged. I said all sorts of things about the election, and which they told I you believe it 100 percent. They no, told I believe, you it no, I have all Can the you facts. shut up, Look, please? I have all the facts. I, in one way, I you looked for a trial facts. because it was so dishonest, okay, so rigged and such a dangerous thing for our country. We have to have borders and we have to have fair elections. We have neither. But but I want to talk about the border. I want to talk about the border, but we have to When I spoke in front of Fred Raffensperger, who again last week said I didn't do anything wrong. Well, it sounded like you were asking for him to come up with 11,000 votes. No. And you know that. You're, you're terrible when you say this. You're off to a bad start. Because what I said <laughs> was very simple. I got cheated in this election. He told you And you all didn't. I need is like 11,000, whatever He the told number. you didn't. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Well, when you put it that way, ma'am, yeah, you're right. So Trump said one thing, and the other guy said another. So obviously, great fact check. Oh, stupid me. <laughs> oh, gosh. How could I have ever been so silly? Because he said, no, it didn't. It you you know it's not true. Trump said it did. The other guy said it didn't. Okay, so obviously we know we know that Trump's just a liar, right? He just made the whole thing up. He's the one that's wrong. Obviously, great journalism there, ma'am. You're doing the Lord's work. I offered them. I said if you want to look at tapes, you can look at them. Let's move on to January sixth and the allegations that you tried to subvert the election. And again, I just want to give you a chance to talk about this because voters want to hear about yeah. this. The most senior lawyers in your own administration and on your campaign told you that after you'd lost more than 60 legal challenges, that it was over. Why did you ignore them and decide to listen to a new outside group? Because I didn't respect them. Uh, you'd hire them. Sure, but that doesn't mean, you know, you hire them, you never met these people, you uh -huh. get a recommendation, they turn out to be rhinos or they turn out to be not so good. In many cases, I didn't respect them, but I did respect others. I respected many others I, that, that said the election was rigged. Look, we have many people, and it's my choice. I happen to, I happen to know that the election was rigged. Okay, I know it because I have so much, there's so much proof of ballot stuffing. You know, it's amazing. Right just a little while ago, in terms of the modern history, where the 51 intelligence agents said very specifically, they lied, they all lied. And they said about the laptop that it was Russia disinformation. That was a lie. That had a huge impact on the election. In fact, the pollsters say over 10 points. I didn't need 10 points. I needed one tenth of a point. Uh, if you take a look at the Twitter files, with the FBI and Twitter dealing, that had a huge impact on the election. Just those things. But in addition to when that, you, say you, needed, you have ballot stuffing, you have a lot of When them. you say you needed one-tenth of a point, you one needed one-tenth of a point. point? I needed a very small to win? I think somebody said 22,000 votes. To win? Yeah. If you divided among the states, it was 22,000 uh, 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 something uh, uh, to, to that effect. Yeah. To win the election? Yeah, if I would have had yeah, another 22,000 yeah, votes over the whole... Are you listening? But they rigged is, the election. If you look at Pennsylvania... But Mr. President, if you you're saying you needed more votes to win the election. Are you acknowledging you didn't win? If you look at all of the statistics, all of the votes... They say 22,000 votes over millions and millions of votes, 22,000 votes. So when they do Twitter files or when they have 51 intelligence agents come out and lie that the laptop from hell was Russia disinformation, and now they find out it's not, but they knew that at the time, uh, they cheated on the election I, in that way too. I just want to be clear though. Are you saying you needed those votes in order to win? Are you acknowledging you didn't win? I'm not, not acknowledging, no. I say I won the election. Okay. Even though, again, your lawyers told you you did not. No, no, no. Did you? Just, let some me understand. people told me that, okay. but many people told me the opposite. You, see, you called some of your outside lawyers. You said they had crazy theories. Why were you listening to them? Were you listening to them because they were telling you what you wanted to hear? You know who I listened to myself? I saw what happened. I watched that election, and I thought the election was over at 10 o'clock in the evening. You were listening to your instincts. Uh, my instincts are a big part of it. That's been the thing that's gotten me to where I am, my instincts. But I also listened to people. There are many lawyers. I could give you many books. 
uh, I, there are books that are written on how the election was rigged. There are numerous books that were written on how the election was Just rigged. to be clear, were you listening to your lawyer's advice or were you listening to your own instincts? I was listening to different people, and when I added it all up, the election was rigged. We've heard so much, Mr. President, about that day, the actual day of January 6th, from other people. Yeah. But quite frankly, we haven't heard from you about your own perceptions of how that day unfolded. Sure. You talked about, I've heard you talk about the rally, and I'm curious about what happened when you got back to the White House. I know you spent most of the day in the dining room. What were you doing in there? How were you watching it unfold? So let me just tell you about January 6th. First of all, uh, I had very little to do with January 6th. I was asked to speak. And I was the President of the United States. I'm allowed to do that. But I was asked to speak. Other groups, I think it was women's groups, a lot of people were involved in that. And it was incredible. It was incredible. It was, I think, the largest group I've ever spoken. You never see that. You never see pictures of the group that I was speaking to. I think it was the most people, I've, and I've spoken to some very large groups. Hundreds of thousands of people were there. And it was a beautiful, beautiful sight. But just so you understand, um, I went and I spoke. And by the way, peacefully and patriotically, and all of that which wasn't reported, which wasn't reported, but when I spoke, I, I have had senators go up. I said, they said, I've never heard you speak so moderately. You were very moderate. What happened when you got to the, back to the White House? Well, wait, 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 let me just say. So I spoke. And then I went back. I wanted to go down peacefully and patriotically to the Capitol. The Secret Service, who I have great respect for, said, sir, it's better if you don't do that. It could be unsafe. because They didn't mean because of riots. It because, you know, it takes one guy with, with bad intentions, okay? So I didn't have a dispute with them. You know, you had that one person said, I grabbed the man around oh. the neck. Actually, I wish I was so strong to be able to do that. These are all tough guys, smart guys. To dispute guys. that account. Dispute <laughs> it? Who wouldn't dispute it? She's the craziest account I've ever heard. You mean that I was in the Beast, and she said, I was in the Beast, and oh. the Secret Service didn't win. So I took a guy who was like a black belt in karate and grabbed his neck and tried to choke what him. What happened? How oh. ridiculous. Just so you understand. This, and I have great respect for Secret Service, by the way. They're fantastic. The Secret Service said, sir, it would be better if you didn't. I said, I'd love to do it. They said it would be better. And so we went back to the White House. Just so you understand. You're the president of the United President's States. She's in charge of Tell me how you watched this all unfold. Were you in the dining room watching TV? I'm not going to tell you. I'll tell people <laughs> later at an appropriate time. Just so you understand, however. What did you do when the Capitol was under attack, though? Let me Mr. just tell you. In the moment that the Capitol was Did you see the statements I made in the Oval Office and just outside of the Oval Office? Absolutely. Go I was home. there that day. Our police are great. We love our police. We love everybody. Go home. That was, this was that a was beautiful more, That statement. was at 4 o'clock well, in the afternoon. More than, I don't know. Three hours after the attack started. But there were put out before that. I want to know. Who you By the way, on that day. Nancy Pelosi, I, I I don't have, I, why would I tell you that? Listen, Nancy Pelosi was in charge of security. She turned down 10,000 soldiers. If she didn't turn down the soldiers, you wouldn't have had January 6th. Did you call military or law enforcement? What? Did you call military or law enforcement at the moment the Capitol was under attack? I'm not going to tell you anything. I okay. told, I, yeah, let me put it this way. I behaved so well. I did such a good job. Nancy Pelosi turned down 10,000 soldiers. If she didn't do that, but and now Nancy I understand, Pelosi have I understand that, that the police testified against. In chief, listen to me, Kristen. Listen to me. Listen, I understand Kristen. that the police testified against listen her. That she him. very strongly against mm -hmm. her. Capitol Police, great people. They testified against her, and they burned all the evidence. Okay, they burned all the evidence. Mr. They President, destroyed all the evidence about Nancy Pelosi. What do you say to people who wonder why you, you as Commander in Chief, you have authorities that Nancy Pelosi doesn't have? As no, no, she has authority over why the Why didn't Capitol. you send help in that moment, though? Uh, frankly, just so you understand, I assume that she took care of it. She turned down. But when you realized that, that the National Guard wasn't coming? Well, you, didn't, you don't realize coming. anything until quite a while. National Guard not coming. I, yes, I asked it to be there three days in advance, and she turned it down. She says that that request was never officially made. Oh, just stop so it. you know. Let, let me just tell you. Let me ask the you about mayor of D, let mm -hmm. me try The mayor of D.C. gave us a letter saying that she turns it down. Okay, we have it. Nancy Pelosi also was asked, and she turned it down. The police commission, I'm talking about Capitol the day police, of wait a minute, yep. Capitol Police said <laughs> that he wanted it and Nancy Pelosi wouldn't accept it. She's responsible for January Let's, 6th. Mr. President, Nancy Pelosi is responsible. Mr. President, the you're the president, though. You have, to interview you have authorities that no one else has as the commander in chief. Do you think you showed leadership on that? Yes, day? absolutely. I did. Okay. And I showed calm. Uh, Nancy mm -hmm. Pelosi uh, is responsible for the security and she did a terrible job. Looking and by the forward, way, from what I understand, they burned all the evidence. Let, Okay, oh. she says she never got an official request. They say they didn't, oh, but that's so what you're saying. Let, let's talk about and her daughter taping let's her. Talk her daughter about, happened to be a documentary. Let's talk about worker. potential documentary pardons. Documentary worker just happened to be let's, there taping her at the time. Considering that the shaman who did not, I mean, what did the shaman do? He stood there. Right. What did Paul do? He stood there. The shaman got how many months? Right. Forty-one. What did he do? What did he do? He went. He just he walked in with the Trump flag into the Senate. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it. it. And he got. So it, I don't know if eight months was was good or bad. Well, I think the one thing, if you drag it out, after the Democrats lose the House, yeah, yeah. and then they get rid of the committee, right. people may lose interest. Yeah. 
the first trials are going to get a lot of attention. Yes. It's like anniversaries. The first one is right. a big deal. They did right. a really big deal. Right. Ten years right. No one's going to care after the Democrats right. out of power. Okay. If there was a, if there was an insurrection, you're you were supposed to be in line marching. You're in the military. You know right. this. No, that's you were not supposed to have a plan. It's an insurrection. It's the sorriest insurrection in, in so the worst. 20th, 21st century ever. No guns. A no guy, plan. A guy People smoking, taking selfies. A guy smoking pot. Yeah. Uh, I love the guy yeah, smoking pot. Uh, like, so I want you to know that I'm from New York City, and I am was always a long time ago friends with Gavin McGinnis, who's supposedly the guy that started yeah, the Red Boys. Right. Yes. I and remember. he, when you say it was a drinking club, I'm just telling you guys, I don't know what the Proud Boys is, but I know Gavin McGinnis. I went on road trips with him to parties. Mm -hmm. It was so comical to me when I first started hearing about like Proud Boys are smart. This was like years ago when they started saying in Brooklyn yeah, where he's from. I was like, what? This guy, I mean, he may say, he may talk shit, but yeah. a lot of it is like he's a provocateur. He, he says is, it yeah. to like be yeah, funny or whatever. Right. But the idea that he's now being elevated to being this, it, it, makes me, yeah. it totally makes me laugh. Uh, we're talking about <laughs> potential pardons because a lot of your supporters are wondering about that. Proud Boys. Uh, leader Enrique Tarrio was sentenced to 22 years in jail. Now that you know what the sentence is, 22 years yeah. in jail, will you give him a pardon? Will Are you, you give other Proud Boys a pardon? I don't know him. <laughs> I never met him. I never heard of him until I started reading this Will stuff. you pardon him? But I want to tell you, he I and would. other people have been treated horribly. Antifa killed people, and those guys didn't even get tried in many cases. There's no. They put these guys in jail for 17, 18, and 22 years. They didn't kill anybody. Some of them never even went into the Capitol. Some of them weren't even in D.C. and they got a 22 or a 17 year sentence. 16, 18, More than 15, people 22. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, a thousand people. Will How you, many people? Let me ask you this. How many people were charged for destroying Portland? How many people were charged for burning down the police pardon? precinct will and the courthouse? Will you pardon him though? Will you pardon him? In Minneapolis, I'd certainly look at it. I'd look at that and I'd look at all the other people that have suffered, the J6 people. People, Mr. President, let me ask you one final question and let's move on to foreign that policy. That didn't even go into the building have suffered gravely. And you have to say one system of justice, right? You take a look at what's gone on in Portland. They burned down the city. The city is in shambles to this day. The store owners don't even rebuild storefronts anymore. They put up two by fours. I want to move on to foreign policy, Mr. President. But why let me do just you ask do that? Why do, why do you say, give me a horrible question and then you don't let me answer it? You're off to a bad start, I'm telling you. Mr. President, I just I want to make sure you get we get to talk about foreign policy as no, but, well. But I don't mind. I have all the time in the you world. You do? Okay. I have all the time in the world. <laughs> why is it that the people, Antifa people, and very bad people that burned down Portland, burned down Minneapolis, burned down so much, in New York City, what they did in New York City, and they were barely charged. And yet the people in Washington, in some cases, never even went into the building. They've been persecuted. They've well, been persecuted. The people who were charged in January 6th, some of them were charged with sedition. Some of them were charged everything. for violating but, the Capitol. But many of these people have been they, persecuted, your supporters, what they've done to them. Your and they didn't do this to the people that burned down. You take a look at, at Portland. It's like a burned down hulk of a city, including the federal courthouse. Mr. President, if you were reelected, would you pardon yourself? I could have pardoned myself. Do you know what? I was given an option to pardon myself. I could have pardoned myself when I left, and I could have done it. And all of these questions you're asking me about the fake charges, you wouldn't be asking me because it's a very powerful, it's a very powerful thing for a president. Um, I was told by some people that these are sick lunatics that I'm dealing with. Give yourself a pardon, your life will be a lot easier. I said I would never give myself a pardon. Even if you were reelected in this moment? Well, I think it's very unlikely. What, what did I do wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, you mean because I challenged an election? They want to put me in jail? I challenge an election, but I challenge a crooked election. So you ask that question, but you don't ask yourself why he's being charged in the first place? That's the real question. It's not, would you give yourself a pardon? It's like, did he actually do something to warrant criminal charges to this magnitude? And the answer is no. And so until, and you know, unless you're prepared to ask the people who are responsible for bringing these ridiculous charges against Donald Trump just to try to stifle him, just to try to stamp out the movement that is behind him. Why they're doing what they're doing to this country. Until you're willing to get to the bottom of that fact, don't ask ridiculous questions like whether or not he would pardon, pardon himself for what? I mean, for, for what? Let's not even like mention all the past presidents, the war criminals, the killers, the, you know, whatever, the, you know, Y'all know, we've had some trifling ass people, okay? It's like ridiculous, the fact that like Watergate was made such a huge scandal and then Joe Biden is literally selling out the country actively, you know, 
his son was selling paintings for access not that long ago. Okay, let's not forget all that has happened. And m most of us, or a lot of people don't even know, honestly. They're, they're just ignorant to the facts. But I'm here to tell you, Biden is probably the most corrupt pr pr president we've ever had, as far as I can see. And people don't bat an eye about it. But yet, people have been after him for seven years, after Donald Trump, for the past seven to eight years since he went down that escalator and have not been able to tie him down, have not been able to nail him to the wall on anything. And now they're just going full force against every single thing that he has. All of his family, all of his properties, all of his wealth, all of his supporters. Just to take this man down, and it still hasn't worked. It's, I mean, it's quite remarkable. So it's not... Well, it was a rigged election. Right I challenged a rigged election. And now I'm going to win for a third time. Amen. Let's and I just hope they have better vote counters. Let's move Amen, on to brother. foreign policy, Mr. President. I want to talk about the war in Ukraine. I want to big picture get a sense of how you see this conflict. Do you see the security of Ukraine as critical to the security of the United States? Okay. Uh, let me talk about it without interruption. <laughs> Ukraine would have never happened if I were president. If this election weren't rigged, <laughs> Ukraine would have never happened. You would have hundreds of thousands of people, including... And I'll answer the question directly for you, ma'am. No, Ukraine's security is not, you know, it has nothing to do with our security. The, what happens to Ukraine, the fate of Ukraine, should have no bearing on the fate of this country, okay? We're not, you know, innately connected to them through space and time and, you know, forces more powerful than human man could ever even imagine. No, we're not. Ukraine is just some corrupt, uh, you know, money laundering pit of a country that used to be part of Russia for the majority of its existence, where people were actually living on that land, and now is just run by, you know, a midget who likes to play the piano with his dick in front of large crowds and, you know, dresses in scantily clad outfits in uh, gay music videos, okay? It's not a serious question, and you're not a serious person. Lots of soldiers still living. Uh, the cities would be flourishing or at least up. These are cities that can never be rebuilt again, certainly not the way they were. Magnificent buildings all ripped down like a demolition site. Mm -hmm. It would have never happened for two reasons. Number one, uh, and most importantly, Putin has a lot of respect for me. <laughs> and uh, He wouldn't have played games. And I told him, don't ever go in. And he would never have gone in. This was only after I left that this happened. Likewise, President Xi don't ever would go never, in. ever be talking about Taiwan the way he's talking said. about it. He said, it don't right ever now. go in. And they didn't. They weren't talking about it. It was only after I left. He would have never gone in. Equally have. as importantly, oil prices Going would have been in. at $40 a barrel instead of $110 a barrel. So he wouldn't have been able to afford going in. He actually is the <laughs> only nation that made money because oil has been driven up so high by stupid people like Biden. Biden is an incompetent <laughs> man. And what happened is oil. In fact, you're going to hit a new high very soon again. That means Russia. Russia makes money from oil. Russia is going to make a lot of money. And because they're making a lot of money, there's no reason for them to settle other than humanitarian reasons and let's not assume people are going to be so humanitarian so <laughs> Putin would have never gone in because oil was at forty dollars a barrel and he would have been able to afford to have gone in at a hundred dollars a barrel he made a fortune and that's one reason the other reason he wouldn't have gone in is because I said don't go in don't even think about it just to that key question though Mr. President do you think our security the United States security is linked to Ukraine's security I think that Europe has to do more. We're in for $200 billion, they're in for $25 billion, and it affects them more than it affects us. It certainly affects them much more than it affects us. So you do think that it's linked well, I think Europe has taken advantage of a stupid president. You've probably... Look, look, Biden... Why would our security, the United States of America, the number one military force in the world, and you can say that it's dwindling, you can say that it's at risk, which is all true, but the fact remains, we are currently the greatest military force in the world. Why would our security be directly linked to a 30-year-old country, uh, you know, an absolute speck in the realm of importance, okay? A nothing burger, if you will. A corrupt shithole. Whatever you want to say, however you want to label it. Why would our security be linked? So she's basically saying, in her own little roundabout way, that there are people out there who think that if Ukraine is taken over by Russia, that that poses some innate threat to us as, as Americans on, here on our soil. I, that's the, the entire premise of that is just ridiculous. 
It's not true. We're not our security. The security of this country should not should never be linked to the security of any one country ever. Okay, M maybe besides like whatever the our neighbors to the north and our neighbors to the south for the simple fact of you know that like we obviously don't want our enemies uh, butting up to our borders. You know, which is what Russia's whole thing was. They were not okay with NATO slowly creeping in to Ukraine, which shares a large landmass border with them. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. I mean, we, we are like, we're so stupid. We, most of us don't, don't even know what the, what the war's really about. Most of us don't really even know what's going on over there, who's winning, who's losing, who's doing what, who's saying, I mean, it's just like, people just repeat shit that they hear on the news or that they see on social media, and they get angry over this country that has nothing to do with them. And they have like strong positions being completely ignorant on the facts. It's, it's, I just say like, let's worry about us and let them worry about them. I, I don't, is that so wrong of a, of a position to have? I, I just don't think so. You should say to them, you have to equalize, you have to catch up. You know, Europe you is about the same size yourself. as our economy if you add them all up, add the countries up. It's about the same size. And Biden should say to them, like I did with NATO. You know, NATO, they all owed money. I said, get your money in. And we had over four hundred and thirty million billion dollars put in almost not NATO. And the head Just of NATO, NATO. Stoltenberg, Let's get rid of NATO. Secretary General, nice guy. He saying. said to me, most amazing thing I've ever done. And he said it publicly too. He said, Bush would come in, make a speech and leave. Obama come, would come in, make a speech and leave. Trump came in and said, You guys aren't paying your bills. And I got him to pay. You know, they asked me something, which hasn't been reported, but the media knows it. Uh, we had a meeting of the twenty eight countries at that time, twenty eight countries. And they said to me, are you saying, sir, because I said you got to pay your bills, are you saying, sir, that you won't protect us against Russia if we don't pay? Why said, would we? Sorry to tell you, that's what I'm saying. You know what happened? <laughs> yeah. They started sending us money like, and I was never given credit for it, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't even have a NATO if it wasn't for me. Let me ask you. But here's President, the thing. About the European strategy. countries have to start paying their share because we are having to do with Ukraine. We've got to get rid we're of NATO. we're at $200 billion and they're at 20 Just or $25 banned. billion. It's so unfair. Let me ask you about your strategy, though, because you have said you want to end this war in 24 yeah. hours. You saw the meeting between Kim Jong-un and President Putin. Right. Do you think that complicates your strategy if you were reelected to try no. to end this Look, war in It would have been hours? easier if the war didn't start and you'd have hundreds of thousands of people living, most importantly. But it would have been a lot easier if it didn't. But I can get it done and I can get it done quickly. Uh, How do you do it? There's you another example. You Why would he give you that strategy? You talk about Kim Jong-un, right? Mm -hmm. dumb, dumb. I got along great with Kim Jong-un after the first month or two when we were sparring. But I got along <laughs> great with him. We were in no danger. There was President Biden said, and he felt even now, and President Obama told me when we sat down, Obama told me, and Biden still to this day, except I don't think he knows he's he can't put two sentences together. <laughs> but President Obama told me our biggest threat is from North Korea. We're going to end up in a war. We didn't end up with a war with North Korea. We were going to make a deal. I would say I would have had a deal made with North Korea shortly after the election had the election not been rigged. How do you end this war, though, talking of deals? How do you end this war well, in 24 hours? I can't tell you exactly yeah, because if dummy. I did, people understand. If I tell you exactly, <laughs> I lose all my bargaining chips. I mean, you can't really say exactly what you're going to do, but I would say certain things to Putin. I would say certain things to Zelensky, both of whom I get along. Ridiculous. Don't forget, Zelensky did something that was very honorable. American media is they so asked bad. Him, it didn't stop these animals from impeaching me, but, you know, one of those things. They asked him, <laughs> did Trump do anything wrong? He said, absolutely not. It was a very normal phone call. You can't say that about Biden's call because Biden, what he did was horrible with the prosecutor. But <laughs> he said something that was very honorable. He could have grandstanded and said, oh, I felt threatened. He said that President Trump did absolutely nothing wrong on the phone call. Some people hear you say you're going to end the war in 24 hours, yep. and they worry that means President Putin is going to get to keep no, the no, territory no, no. he's unlocking. I'd make a fair deal for everybody. Nope. Fair, doesn't fair. mean that? Wouldn't that's be a win for Putin? You know, that's something that could have been negotiated because there were certain parts, Crimea and other parts Putin's of the country, that president. a lot of people expected could happen. You could have made a deal. So they could have made a deal where there's less ter territory right now than Russia's already taken, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And you could have made a deal when nobody was killed, they had a deal, they would have had a Ukraine country. Now nobody even knows if Ukraine is going to be totally taken over. I will I mean, say this, something's going the first on, time. and it's not good for Ukraine because the news is no longer reporting about the war. President mm -hmm. Putin's worried people are losing interest, President Zelensky's worried that people are losing interest in this war. As you're saying, no, no, no I'm just saying, how I'm not would, seeing anything about the war anymore. To me, that means well, that who, the problem- Why, why, why is it important for people to have interest in Zelensky's war, okay? Nobody cares. Nobody, nobody should care. Absolutely not. Interest in war? Like, yeah, oh, let's keep, the, I'm very interested in keeping this war going. Yes, let's continue having, uh, you know, violent uh, struggles. Let's continue having violent altercations with our neighboring countries. Yeah, let's continue. I'm very interested in this. I mean, what, what kind of dumb shit is that? 
He needs to go find the fucking seat and have it. Quickly. Because I'm sick of him always somewhere with his damn hand out. I mean, shove it up your ass. Here's my attitude on the war. I just want people to stop being killed. You know, I was asked by that ridiculous CNN group during my town hall, whose side are you on? I said, I'm on the side of people stop being killed. I don't want to see people killed. They're being killed by the thousands and thousands and thousands. And that's the side I'm on. I don't want. And you know what? People like that answer, to be honest. And I stay with that same answer. I want people to stop being killed. Ron DeSantis says he's in this race to finish the border wall. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? Well, I, built, I built 500 vote? miles of border wall. And just look at where we're at now. I mean, this is the most important issue. I wish that, like, she hadn't waited to ask all of these questions about the border and everything at the end of the damn interview. I mean, a lot more uh, could have been, a lot more time could have been spent on this issue, being that, in my opinion, it's probably issue number one when it comes down to it. I mean, it's very, very high of, in, in, uh, in regards to importance. The, the border, I mean, just look at where we're at. We have people coming in on a monthly basis that the numbers are the size of current U.S. cities. You know, they're, they're, I believe one of the numbers they used was 260,000 people came in last month or, or I mean, something, something along those lines, which is like, you know, these are replacement numbers. These people do not have anywhere to go. They're coming in. They're making problems. They're squeezing us for all that we've got. They are stealing our jobs, money, our livelihoods, and our country. And it is absolutely ridiculous. It's a, it's a, it's a stain on this, this country. It's a stain on the West as a whole. It is absolutely disgusting to think that we have politicians that just allow ourselves to be infiltrated, to be invaded like this by, uh, you know, fighting aged men. For the most part, if you look at what's really coming in, pouring in on a daily basis, all we need is some damn border enforcement. We need, you know, uh, some sort of wall, some sort of structure there, and we need a militarized southern border until further notice. We need mass deportations on the regular, you know, just c continue pumping them out the same way that they came in without any apologies, without any sympathy towards these people, no matter how bad the left cries about it, because the fact of the matter is they didn't care when they were coming in and destroying people's lives. We had the lowest human trafficking numbers. Human. We had the least number of people coming across. All he had to do was go to the beach like he does all the time. If he went to the beach and didn't do anything, we'd have a great water right now. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. Overall, I thought she did a good job. I thought that his answers were very diplomatic for the most part. I did like what he said. I still feel that he is... Um, coming up short of the energy that he had in 2016, which I, I don't know. I mean, he, he, he won with that energy, but a lot of people said that it was uh, extremely close. But I just think they underestimated the amount of cheating that they were going to need in order to get Hillary Clinton over the finish line in 2016. They underestimated Donald Trump's uh, turnout and the people who were going to vote for him. So I think, you know, they, they overcompensated in 2020 with the amount of, uh, you know, rigging that they did during that election. So I, I don't know. I honestly don't know what will get him over the finish line, if they will even allow him to get over the finish line for this coming election. I just pray that the stars will align and everything's going to work out. Uh, I mean, it's just like, what else can you do? Just stay blackpilled and just everything's over, you know, and just end it? No. Obviously, we're not doing that. And conservatives have to fight back. Have to, we have to, like, take... Uh, you know, extra measures. We have to go extra hard in order to combat what has been happening with elections for years in this country. The democratic machine of activists who are out there pounding the pavement, you know, to, to, to rig any sort of way that they can. We have to work against that. That's just my opinion. But I want to know what your guys' opinions are. Before we go, let's look at just in comparison. The thing that, that I have trouble trying to figure out is, everything? is what it is that other than protecting the constitution what is it mm. that these mega republicans think is extreme about what i'm doing mm. they haven't been what? i mean i haven't heard seen any articulation of any of that the Girl, thing hello? That, look at all your go look at your son's laptop real quick okay just i mean this is, what's wrong with him he's in so much denial he is in so you know the the throws 
of dementia so bad that he just doesn't even know what's left and what's right. I mean, I just don't even understand how people can sit up here who, if there's anyone left who still cares about him, you know, hopefully somebody out there does. Jill, I don't know. Hunter, maybe. I I mean, do y'all not care at all? This man's actively up here dying. Like, his brain is literally mush. And y'all just continue to allow him to get up here and make a damn fool of himself. And lastly, let's look at this moment here. In a press conference on budget deal from White House, Joe Biden became confused, then experienced a McConnell-style seven to eight second pause until he was rescued by a reporter with another question, and then abruptly walked off. I hope. Hello? His experience for the speaker Hello? has been one of a personal revelation. Uh-huh. I'm not being facetious. Oh, you're not? I, uh, um, okay, girl, whatever. Anyway. Hello? Girl, hello? Thank you. What? Um, excuse me, what? Thank you, Mr. President. What? And then these fucking fools, these absolute disgraceful idiots. Thank you, Mr. President. We'd like some more, please, Mr. President. Y'all are ridiculous. Y'all are fucking lunatics. All of you. A lot of you. I mean, he just trailed off. I just did not even finish a damn thought to save his life. I mean, my goodness. And look at Rob down here. Trash talking Donald Trump. Just ridiculous. Rob, hang it up. Try, he's, he's been trying to raise his energy levels because he doesn't want a new nickname. He doesn't want low energy Rob. Um, but, you know, that's exactly what he is. We don't have time for him. He's irrelevant. I want to know what you guys think. And before we go, I just do want to show you guys one very important video that is to be respected, is to be revered. You know, this is what they fear, okay? Elijah Schaefer said it the best. This is what Democrats fear. And I just wanted to share this with you guys because it is very important, okay? Dress on tonight, dancing in the dark in the pale moonlight. Thumb of hair with real big beauty queen style. High heels off, I'm selling the lie. <laughs> Oh my god, I feel it in the air, telephone wires oh above. Oh, so slim like a snail, and the arm, I'm sad. I've said it everywhere, nothing scares me anymore. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I have tears. I have tears, okay? I have actual tears. Beautiful. I mean, art art <laughs> and they say art is dead okay i disagree i disagree okay what what a masterpiece <laughs> so i just felt that that was important to share with y'all i mean that this is a need to know basis okay so <laughs> so let me know what you guys think and like the video if you liked it subscribe to the channel for more like this guys i mean it's very important okay very important that you do and yeah, guys, y'all stay safe out there. Until next time, uh, I will see y'all later. Bye. Bye.